Hey everyone, welcome to Pega Hub. I'm Srikant, working as a lead Pega developer based out of Sydney, Australia. And you are in the right place if you want to learn Pega concepts. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you are the first to know if I upload anything new. And if you like the video, hit the like button and share it with your friends. Welcome to the part 2 session of OS series. Today what we are going to do is we are going to do some hands on and the use case that I am going to take is uh, I am going to connect from Pega to LinkedIn. Now to do that first what we need to do is we need to understand what are the setup that we have got from LinkedIn and then we come back and uh, you know I am going to show you how to create uh, the old profile and all this thing in Pega and how to connect it. Before I start this. I would strongly recommend you to first visit my part one video wherein I have explained you the theoretical concept and without understanding the concept doing practical will not make sense at all because you won't be able to understand what you are doing. You won't be able to debug if there is an issue. So first you visit that video and then you come and watch this video. It will make more sense. So let's focus on the part two. Now here, if you see, I have got my LinkedIn profile, right? This is a normal person's LinkedIn profile. For Achieving in today's uh, uh, session, what you need to do is actually you need to find out LinkedIn developer portal first. LinkedIn developer portal, if people do not know about it, is a placeholder wherein you can uh, access all the LinkedIn APIs and for that you need to do certain stuff which I am going to explain. Now the moment you clicked on LinkedIn developer portal, if you have a LinkedIn um, profile already, then it will open something like this. Now here you got multiple tab. The first thing that we need to do is first we create a uh, app. So to do that, what you need to do is we need to go to my app system and let's create an app. Now there are simple steps for the app. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to say test uh, OAuth, right? Let's um, put an app name, anything that you like. The second mandatory page, uh, mandatory thing that uh, it asks is LinkedIn page. Now to get the LinkedIn page, what you need to do is you need to create a page. It's a mandatory thing, right? If you do not have a page, go ahead and create this page. I have already got a page uh, which I am going to just search for uh, Srikanth page. Uh, so as you could see, I have got a page which is called Educational Management 1 to 10 Employee. You can also go for it and if you do not have a page then you can just you know go for and create another page. It's a very simple step. So I need to upload an image. So what I need to do is to upload an image. I can just uh, pick any one for the timing. Yeah, and this is a mandatory one for which we need to do. And then I'll just uh, say uh, I have read and agreed to terms and condition and I create an app. Now once you create an app, so if you see there are five tabs. I'm going to explain uh, on a very brief on what all uh, you need to do. First thing is you need to verify uh, uh, this uh, 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 page. So to do that what you need to do is you just need to generate the URL and once you generate the URL you copy that URL, you paste that URL over here. And the moment you do it, what uh, it will say, it will very, it will say, okay, verify. Okay, you did, right? Now done. Now what well, you say here, I'm done and refresh it. The verification is done now. Okay, done. Verified on so and so date. But the main thing that you need to focus on the auth section, wherein the moment you create an app, you know, if you remember, I was talking all about client ID, client secret and all this thing, it will generate a client ID and a secret for you. So this is kind of your user ID and password for your app to access LinkedIn materials, right? Now here you have got some additional setting. I am going to tell you uh, all the detail uh, as and when we go and you got scopes, you got, you know, some over to setting. Now going to uh, the product tab, this is crucial because this is where we are going to um, uh, access the LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn material. Now the default uh, LinkedIn material will not have any access. So what we need to do is we need to first uh, so there are there are a lot of products right which you can uh, do when I say product basically if you see each products share on LinkedIn so if you see there are two um, uh, link over here one is view docs another one is view endpoint now view docs what it does is basically it uh, kind of uh, you know uh, get you to uh, the page wherein it will tell you all the API details so for example this is the route this is my um, uh, request body schema will be, this will be my share content, you know, all this uh, thing. And this is going to be the body structure. This is going to be a response. So all these things you will find in uh, uh, the view docs. So basically it is a contract wh which will explain, which will tell you what all you can, uh, what all APIs that you can consume, what, all, what is the request body, what is the response body and all these things. Now the second thing is view endpoint. Now the moment I click on view endpoint, what happened is it will tell you 
the endpoint URL. So basically, it, it this is called URI. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the product, which is sign in with LinkedIn, and I'm going to show you the use case. So to do that, what I need to do is first, I need to request an access. To do, you click on request an access, uh, check that I have read, and, uh, read the terms and condition, and do a request access. Once the request access is done, that's where what will happen. So prior to that, if you remember, uh, you, I mean, even now, right? You do not have the scope because I haven't refreshed it. You do not have a scope. The moment you access this product, what happened is if I just um, check the view endpoints, right? Or maybe to start with, I'll check the docs, right? If you see the docs, what happened is this product comes with these two scopes, which like I told on the other day, the authorization server defines a scope, right? So this is what um, uh, happens. So basically, when you add this product, these two scopes will be automatically added in your auth section scope. So it's not been added, right? You just do a quick reference, you would see them added, right? Can you see that? R underscore email address and this profile. And this is exactly what the scope is. Now, these two scope, because you have requested the product, the scope been added. Now you can utilize this scope to, uh, you know, call this uh, respective product. Now, which one we can call? Those are the endpoint that you need to understand. Now, if you see view endpoint, there are four endpoints. So to find out what this respective uh, API does, you need to go to the docs wherein you will find out API request. This is the request, this is the response, and it will tell you everything in detail. So uh, if you want to read, please have a read about it. But for today's session, that's not needed. That's out of scope. So that's why I'm going a little uh, further. Now, one thing that you need to understand. So each URL, right? Uh, will be linked to a permission type. So as you know that there are two, um, I mean, there are four grant type in my last session um, I have told, right? Now out of that four grant type, the two major grant type which has been uh, predominantly used uh, uh, in the market, right? One is uh, three linked. When they say three linked, that means it is authorization code. Uh, you know, the way you um, request, get the authorization code, use the authorization code to get the uh, access token. If you ever see two legged, that means by using client ID and uh, password, how are you going to get the detail? Now, here, if you see here, if you click on the three leg, right? Um, if you click on this learn more, it will clearly tell, LinkedIn will clearly tell the uh, difference between three leg and two leg um, you know, author, uh, authorization. So if you see, this is a um, uh, sequence diagram, right? Wherein a member like exactly what I have uh, have ex explained in my last session. So here, if you see a member locks it uh, by the help of the client, uh, basically it goes to the client app and then once it locks in, then it uh, client app will take you uh, to the LinkedIn server. And uh, with that authorization, what will happen is it will. Uh, so this is a step. If you remember in my last session, I, I was showing you a consent step in while I was showing you the network, right? The consent is nothing, but you are kind of giving a permission that, okay, yeah, uh, that app can uh, access my detail, right? So this is the consent. And once the consent has been received, and that's where you, uh, client app will get the authorization code. And by using the authorization code with client ID and secret, they'll get the access token so that they can call to the resource uh, API. This is the LinkedIn auth server, right? Authorization server, resource server, resource API, and get the response. This is three linked one. Now, coming back to the two-legged one, what they do is basically all they need to pass is the client ID and secret in the request and generate the access token. That's it. Nothing else, right? Now, this API does not allow us to go with the two-legged operation because you are kind of getting the detail about, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to use this uh, route, just a simple route, just to show you the detail. Basically, you are uh, going to uh, get the personal detail of a person, right? That means obviously uh, the personal detail of a person to get the personal detail of a person, you need them to authorize it. So that's the reason why we need to go with the three leg operation. So that's it. Now, coming back to uh, the auth setting, I am going to tell you in a while, but let's uh, pause it here for LinkedIn because we have already done all the necessary setup. Let's go back to Pega. And I am going to show you how you are going to create the uh, um, uh, authentication profile for this one to connect. Now, to do that, what we need to do is first we need to go to record security and authentication profile. Now, in authentication profile, you can click on create. Here, first let me choose over 2.0. Here, what I'm going to do is connect to LinkedIn. 
Now here when I create an open, what Pega has done is, Pega has created all the predefined uh, authentication profile, for example, for Facebook, for LinkedIn, for PayPal, Twitter, whatever they're in the market, right, which is popular. They have created, if you want to create your one, own, that's a different story altogether. All you need to do is custom and, you know, fill in all the data depending on the need. But here what I'm going to do is, I'm going to directly choose LinkedIn. Because it's three that we need to choose authorization code. The moment you choose authorization code, if you find that all the endpoint URLs has already been prefilled, right? Now, if I go back to LinkedIn, okay, or three leg one, if you go and try and find out these uh, values, right? You you can see that it's identical than what Pega has already loaded it. First, put client ID and client secret. Now, before doing that, one thing I wanna uh, you know do in LinkedIn so that I can finish that uh, part is if you see in LinkedIn over here. In the OAuth setting, right, it asks authorize and re redirect URL for your app. Now, to do that, what I need to do is this is the redirect URL. So, what I need to do is I need to set up this URL in over here so that it will be easy for LinkedIn to um, uh, redirect also. Okay, now I'll do update. Okay, now it is updated. All good. Now go back to uh, Pega. Here, the first step we need to do is we need to get the client ID. Now, I'll, I'll copy the client ID and I'll paste it. Now, second thing which you need to do is we need to get the client secret. So to do that, I'll just uh, hide the client secret. Obviously, this is a secret one. So I'll, uh, I, I will hide it. I'll copy it. And what I'll do is I'll paste it here. Okay. Now scope. Coming back to scope, what will happen is, so as you know that scope has, I mean, I have already got these scopes, right? So what you can do is you can literally copy this scopes in a comma uh, and put a comma and put the other scope also. So you defined all the scopes in this section. Okay. So now our OAuth is done. Now the third section is where we are going to connect from Pega to here, right? And it's a three leg one, right? Now what I need to do to do that first, I need to go and get the endpoint URL. To get the endpoint URL, I think I have got it here. So this is what my endpoint URL. So here, what I'm doing, going to do is I'm quickly going to create a service rest and I'm going to show you. Sorry, connect rest, my bad, not service rest. People who uh, uh, do not know how to create connect rest, I will strongly recommend you guys to uh, watch my connect rest series or uh, API series so that you will find everything. But I'll give the link, um, uh, you know, in the description so that you can go and watch if you haven't uh, done that already because I'm not going to explain that detail as that's out of scope for this uh, session. Now here you go to integration and uh, connector and connect uh, create REST integration. The moment you click on this one, what it will uh, ask is, it will ask the name. So we'll quickly give, uh, let's say, uh, fetch, uh, fetch detail. It will ask you the endpoint URL. The moment I click on put, a, put the endpoint URL and where did I get the endpoint URL? I got the endpoint URL from this document, right? So just in case you want to know, you just, uh, Wherever you requested, go to view docs and you will find all the endpoint URLs there. Now to do that, this is where I copy it and it's a get one. Remember this one. Now uh, LinkedIn, um, the moment you put the endpoint URL, Pega would uh, you know ask you whether you want to make it parameter. This, are, this is not a parameterized. This is um, the actual URL uh, which will give you all the information. Now here, what you need to do is as part of add authentication, there is no header here, but as part of add authentication, you need to add the authentication which you, which you have just created. What authentication that you have created? Connect to LinkedIn, right? Now just copy that one or you can just search over here, connect to LinkedIn, it will definitely come, okay? And you have chosen the uh, authentication. So the moment you choose the OAuth profile, what it will do is it will tell you on a brief on what all it is going to do. And then what you need to do is you do a next here. You can do connect there, but I will show you now here resource name is fetch detail. Just put anything that you like, fetch detail. And the moment I click on next, this is where the funnel happens. Just watch carefully. The moment I say connect, what happened is it went to LinkedIn. If you see, it is asking me for my LinkedIn user ID password, right? Let me give my password. So that means basically uh, 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 Pega has gone to LinkedIn and Pega has given all the detail in this URL. What I'll do is I'll do a sign in. The moment I do a sign in, if you remember, if you if you uh, uh, remember the you are that the what is it the sequence that I was telling you for three leg is the second uh, attempt is to give you the consent right. 
This is what uh, it is currently asking me the consent. See, test OAuth would like to use your name and photo, use your primary email address. Uh, you can stop this blah, blah, blah. If you cancel it, obviously the authentication will be denied. But here I'm going to allow it. The moment I'll allow it, the third step, the step which is going to happen is internally is it will, oh, one second. So first thing is, I don't know why it asked. Let me try it another time. I'll give the user ID and password, sign in. And I'll allow it. Maybe the session would have been timed out. The moment I allowed it, can you see that, you know, if I click on run now, you will fetch the response because internally what happened is the authorization code and access token has already been um, uh, shared between these two. And that's where you, you see my detail has come. So if you see my uh, uh, localized last name and my first name over here, uh, and then all the data that is required, it has already got it. Now that means what happened exactly, what you have witnessed is Pega has actually connected to LinkedIn and got the data because of the configuration is correct. Now, now that it is correct, what I need to do is I'll just do a submit, I'll do a next and I'll just do a create. That means what it will do is it will create a database and I'm going to run that database in front of you to make sure that data is coming again. Now it, it generated all the data, uh, go to the database, right? Now what I'll do is I'll do an action and run. Because we have already got the access token, now it's valid for two months as per LinkedIn page. That means my access token would already be valid. Now I don't need to do any auth. Now all it will do is it will use the existing access token and it will try to fetch all the data that is uh, belongs to me. Can you see uh, all the data? So this is how the OAuth works and this is how you would connect uh, from Pega to LinkedIn. I hope you find this video very helpful for you, for your, uh, you know, real time work. Stay tuned for my part three video. I would make uh, an external party connect to the uh, rest service that I would uh, expose and I would use uh, the grant type as client credential, which I'm going to show you in the next video. Now we have reached to the end of my video. Please let me know how do you feel about this video and whether you have learned something about it and whether you understood properly. Stay tuned for my further video so that I can give you more concept and you can learn more from me. Until then, thanks for watching and keep sharing with your friends.